Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm with the Buckle Up team here at University Health System. We get lots of questions through our Buckle Up line about how do I correctly harness my child into their car seat? So I wanna review some key points with you today. We are gonna be talking about how do you put a newborn infant or a child under the age of six months into their infant carrier. So I've got today with me my baby doll just to replicate a newborn infant. This is probably a good representation of any child underneath 10 pounds. So the first thing we want you to remember is children really should only have one layer of clothing on when we get ready to put them into their car seat. If they have a lot of bulky clothing on, it's going to make it difficult for the harness straps to hold them in correctly. So we wanna keep them in just one layer. We can always cover them up with a reverse jacket or a blanket after we've strapped them in. But when we put them in the car seat, we only want that one layer. So the first thing we'll do is we'll also make sure that the harness straps are at the lowest harness slot. Children that ride rear facing should have the harness straps at or below their shoulder level. We do not want those straps to be above their shoulders or the child could actually come out of the car seat in the event of a crash. So we'll evaluate the, the straps first. These straps are here at the lowest level so we know that they're in the right spot. A little bit later, I'll show you how to change those harness straps if they're not. So our first step will be to take our child and place them with their rear all the way to the back of the car seat and then put the straps over their shoulders like we're putting on a jacket. Once we do that, we're going to follow buckle tighten and then clip to the pit. A lot of the parents like to do this clip first and we don't wanna do that. If you do this clip first, you might think that the straps are tight enough on, their, on your baby and they're simply not. So the first thing we're going to do is buckle to the big red button first. So we wanna buckle both sides here at the crotch. The next thing we want to do is we want to tighten the straps on the child We'll have to lower the straps. We, the strap should be so tight on the child that we cannot pinch any additional webbing. If I can pinch additional webbing like this, the straps are simply not tight enough and they won't safely keep the child into the car seat. So we wanna make sure that they're as snug as possible. Our last step is to clip this chest clip here and place it right at the armpit level of the child. Now, important thing to remember is that babies don't really have necks, right? So it'll look like this chest clip is very close to them and some parents have worried that it might choke their child. It will not. That harness um, retainer clip or chest clip as we call it, needs to be at the armpit level because it's actually the thing that's keeping the straps on your baby's shoulders. If it's lower, uh, the straps could actually come off the child and the child could come out of the car seat and that's not the purpose of using the car seat, right? So we wanna make sure that this retainer clip and this or chest clip is at the right level. So we buckle, we tighten, and we clip to the pit. Our next step is we're going to pack in our baby. Newborn babies are not able to hold their head up, and you might find there's a lot of space alongside them, and they might even like tilt to the side a little bit like this. If that happens, they could, their airway could get closed off and we, they could have trouble breathing. So we don't want that to happen when they're brand new and they're using their car seat. So we're going to do what we call pack them in. The way to accomplish that is for us to use roll receiving blankets and adult size washcloths. Do not buy the preformed inserts. Your child needs customized support and that's best accomplished through receiving blankets and washcloths. So what we'll do is we will take a standard receiving blanket and we will simply roll it up and then place it alongside the child, providing that support. We'll do one on the other side of the child. So we will, and it doesn't matter really how you roll it, as long as you are um, rolling it. And here I'll make it pretty so we don't see that. There we go. Um, now, you don't have to, a lot of parents have asked, do I have to basically put my child's hand back or can I let their arm come forward? You can let their arm come forward. It's not about creating uh, a place where your child's uncomfortable, it's about providing support to the child's head. 
And unfortunately, we have to fill in the space beside them first, because if you just add something here at their head, it will fall down because of that space. So we need to fill the space here first. And then that, that next step is to take an adult size washcloth, simply fold it in half, and then fold it into thirds. It creates the perfect size packet for your child's head. If it's big like this, you could still even fold it another time. And we just slide right here. Same thing, fold it in thirds, fold it in half, and place here alongside the child's head. As you can see, this is providing great support to the child's head and they're not able to move it down or move it up or to the side. And that's really the point. We wanna position the child's head in place so their airway stays nice and open and they don't fall forward or fall to the side and close off that airway. So it looks strange, but this is the safest way for your top child to travel. Buckled, tightened, clipped to the pit, and packed in. Now you can see, I'm just gonna tilt this demo up a little bit for you to be able to see. You can see there's nothing actually behind the child. We don't want anything behind them pushing that head forward. We just want stuff on the side of them holding that head into place. So we wanna make sure that that is what happens. And I also don't have anything underneath the child lifting the child up. We don't need to do that. Um, in fact, that's not allowed by the manufacturer. So we need to make sure we don't put anything underneath them, okay? The last step is to make sure that the other things that you have in your vehicle are okay for you to use. So as you see, I did not at, use this to provide head support for the child. And the reason for this is they are not the right fit for your children. These are what are called non-approved products because they're not regulated. So we don't know how they'll work in the event of a crash. This is just simply not safe to use. So we recommend that you use the rolled receiving blankets and the towels. Other items that are not approved for use or crash tested in vehicles are things like this type of sun visor. Anything that can hook on or suction on in a vehicle could also in a crash suction right off and become something that hurts or maims. So we don't want to use that. Including everybody's favorite, the mirror. I know we love our mirrors, but we want to be able to see our kiddos. But if we're focusing on the mirror, instead of focusing on our driving, we could get distracted and unfortunately end up in a crash. So as much as we want to put those mirrors in place, they're simply not safe to use because they don't connect to your vehicle seat in a safe way. They can actually come right off and then become something that hurts not only your baby, but you also as the driver. All right. Well, those are our tips and tricks today for rear-facing harnessing with our newborn infants. Let us know if we can help you. You can reach out to our Buckle Up program at any time. Thanks.